All right, welcome back to the Smokescreen Podcast, episode 31. Yes. 31. You That's didn't believe it. Surprise It is 31. The, the Making a Murder. I'm sorry. We're <laughs> jumping ahead here. The, uh, what's it called? Tiger King. Yes. Was number 30. The update. The and update. So that's what I was going to say. I am your co-host, Joe fucking Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your co-host, Carol Baskin. <laughs> hey, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> um, and today, <laughs> today's podcast is sponsored by Dean's Pool and Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's 1373 Main Street. And uh, <laughs> let me write this down. Oh, shit. Uh, anyway, Badger Seal pulled out last month, yes, last week, did. because I didn't add the two or three inches dropping the curveball. You forgot that. That part was of the, the whole, plug. that was the whole part of the point of the joke. Um, but yeah, so they pulled out this week. They'll be back. They always come crawling back. Yes, they do. Every time. Anyway, we have a podcast that we, we honestly thought we already did. I know, man. Um, we, we talked, this has been a big part of our life. It has. We've talked about this so much yep. that we actually thought we did an, uh, an official podcast on it. We did talk about it on Twitch for a couple hours one night, um, year, a year, year ago. I'll tell you at least, I, I don't know if I'm getting stories mixed up or memories mixed up, Yeah, but I felt like we talked about it. And for some reason we were wearing Santa hats. Is that possible? Uh, maybe we did wear Santa hats a couple of times for Christmas streams on YouTube, but we, yeah, we were in there. Maybe we did. And I felt like that's when we talked about it, but it could be mixing memories, yeah, it but could, it's been it, a while. It could be. So anyway, obviously I said making a murder earlier. We're talking about making a murder. We thought we talked about this on the podcast this came out before we started the podcast. We had just talked yeah. about it amongst ourselves so much, and on Twitch that one time we just had to talk about it. This is the most insane, probably documentary period, but at least true crime for damn sure. True crime yeah. story, documentary, whatever you want to call it. It's absolutely insane. It and really, um, really is. We'll get into all this, but I just got to say right up front, I went back and watched uh, this probably first four or five episodes of season two. Yeah. There's two seasons. For anybody not familiar, obviously, it's a Netflix documentary. I think everybody in the world seen it. Yeah, I think so. But uh, just based off the first three or four in episode or season two with Kathleen Zellner getting involved, if you don't see anything else, that is enough to bring a lot of doubt to this official's case. Right. Because, I mean, regardless of what, you know, because we got to acknowledge it is a documentary. You know, they did cut out things we didn't see. People, Other people say there's more to the story that we didn't see there. It was one-sided. Yeah. But just that alone, it doesn't matter about anything else being one-sided. That's what she recreated, and it's physically impossible for the bloodstains and all that stuff we'll get into to be where they were as the, as the state presented them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so and physics is physics. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter what else is left out. You right. Know what I'm saying? This, this thing will... It'll tug at parts of you, man. Yes. It, it, it will... It will make you mad. It will make you sad. It'll confuse you. It'll make you question right and wrong and, you know, up and down even. I mean, you get so yes. really mixed up. My thing is, you know, like the title, just the title itself, Making yeah. a Murder. Making a Murder. You know, to me, it's like... Um, Making a murder, as in almost literally manufacturing a murderer. Right, that's the way out I of took somebody it. who wouldn't normally be a murderer because, it, you know, the guy was falsely convicted yes. and served eighteen years in prison for a sexual assault, rape, a really graphically violent. Right, uh, uh, out in a was it a, like a park somewhere? On the beach, on beach. Yeah, yeah. there's like a running trail or something. Yep, he yeah, pulled yeah. him back. Uh, she was this lady was pulled back uh, off the sand into and, the woods. Yeah, yeah. and and um, so a guy was convicted of that and then served eighteen years. So it's like to me, you could look at the title as, you know, if he is a murderer, right? That's kind of what made him into a murderer. Yeah, but him I'm being also, falsely accused yeah, and convicted and or whatever. Yeah, and serving all that time and, and coming him out, harder. And, yes. You know, and then I also look at it as the cops and the system, you know, 
making him a murderer right. with bad evidence and fake planting shit and stuff. Right, because they need you know, a conviction or whatever. Yeah, so they, they mm-hmm. made him into a murderer that way. And, so and, I look at it both. It's really weird. Yeah, and I think they probably intended that. And I was going to say that, you know, it kind of goes to what you're saying is, you know, there's a lot of Facebook groups I noticed. When we were talking about actually finally doing this podcast, I was looking at some of the groups on there that are, I I always try to be fair and look at the other side of things. So I was looking at some of these groups that maintain that he is guilty. And, but really the only evidence they have is his past because he had got in trouble with the law a few times. That doesn't make you a murderer. Yeah. Um, Now, sure. Some of that is, I'm not saying it's not real. He did get in trouble with the law a couple of times. Well, there's one thing with a cat or something, you know, animal cruelty, one right. thing. There was, uh, you know, but just because you get in a fight with your girlfriend and say some stupid shit one time, you know, 40 years ago, right. doesn't mean that you're capable or of murder or whatever. So that whole thing, there's a reason, because I, 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 I actually have experience in this being on a jury, is you cannot take, they will not let you know um, if somebody has a past record. You can't take that into account. Yeah, that, there's there's so that's certain a legal things they'll thing. allow in and right. certain things they won't. Yeah, and I learned that and and actually doing being on a trial and being a juror and then I was asking that actually in the deliberation room. What about his past? And you can't know that they won't let you. Right, you can't take that in consideration yeah. from a legal perspective, obviously. Yeah, and and it does make sense. I yeah. get I get that. Yes, because it it can kind of taint your it, thoughts. It, it about taint, some, it taints you know? your thoughts. Well, I mean they've done something before. Yeah. But uh, this is a whole different thing. So I don't know. Do we need to? Do we need? Do you want to overview this whole thing, or do we? Just, yeah, I think I, people know for the most part. But I think in a, to nu- set in it a up, real quick nutshell, yeah. you, what you have is is you have a guy who, like I said, he um, was arrested and charged with this sexual assault and rape of kind of a upstanding citizen of the community, and the guy is from the poor family and the. You yeah, know, the dirty, yeah. Um, uneducated, yes, really dark blue collar family, right? <laughs> dark, <laughs> dark blue, exactly. <laughs> of course, talking about Stephen Avery. I don't know if you yeah. said his name. No, I have not. Or do you? I don't know if you. No, I, I, I did. didn't yeah. purposely. So obviously, say Stephen it. Avery being that, and then of course you get into. And, that's what I was going to say. His family, um, and they're using that in his defense actually. And Brendan Dassey, who is uh, his cousin, who comes into it, they all lived on this property. Right, and, right, and they were well, the auto salvage, basically yeah. auto company. Well, what I was gonna say was he did he did time for that. He did eighteen years, yes, and then DNA evidence got him out, freed him. Yeah, all right. So he maintained that whole time his innocence. He didn't have to serve eighteen years. They there were so many times that all he had to do was say I'm sorry, yes. and he could have got out on parole. Exactly. All right, but he wouldn't. He served every. He was going to serve every day of that time because he was not going to say he did something he didn't do, and nobody believed him. Right. But he got he and got he started educating himself on the law and stuff while he was there the first time. Yeah. And then you know ends up that they find the actual criminal who had been on the police radar for a long time. Right. And DNA freed him. And of course, the irony of this story is he DNA's, goes back to prison for DNA actually yeah. condemning him. But the way it was done was completely insane to me. Right. So it's it's big news there in this uh, is it Wisconsin, Went Wisconsin, right? Yeah, all right, absolutely. It's all over the news that this man served eighteen years for a crime he didn't do. Um, it shows him coming out of jail, prison with his long beard and some big smile, and there's going to be he's going to get paid. Right? Yeah, he's going to get paid. So he's going to get paid. Uh, he's going to get paid. They're talking, what, like $4 million or yeah, something Yeah, and then like on that. top of that, he f- actually files a suit against the sheriff and, and some of the cops personally would be involved in this suit. Because it, it looks like, if you watch the documentary, and like Chris said in the very beginning, we realize that documentaries are slanted. You know, sure. They are painting a picture that they want you to see. But this one, to me, like he also said is it shows things you really can't argue with. There's no a side to it. It's just fact or not. Right. I mean, you know? physics is physics. Yeah. That's the bottom line. I mean, I, and I was just pointing that out really early to, so we can build on it later, but it doesn't matter who was interviewed. No. It doesn't matter who was left out or who declined to participate. Yep. Physics is physics, and the way they said it happened could have not have happened. It's right. physically impossible is all I'm saying. That's right. Now, if it happened yeah. a different way, 
Sure, maybe. But that's not what they presented. And yeah. Anyway. So he's almost like a little folk hero. He goes from being yeah. a dirty, dumb kid in school and coming up, and, and he goes through all what he goes through. He gets out, and, he, and, and they're pass, passing bills, like the Stephen Avery bill or whatever, uh, about wrongful convictions and stuff. Right. And, yep. um, and so right around the time that the case, the trial is going to uh, happen that Chris talked about where he's filing suit to get paid, a girl goes missing. And right. she, her remains are found on his property, Stephen Avery's property, and he's supposed to be the last person to see her alive. So, right. So that's kind of where the story, even though episode one of the very first one gives a lot of the backstory, that's kind of where you find yourself. It's like, oh, this is where this is starting. Right. He got out after 18 years, and now he's locked up again over yeah. a murder this time. So... That's kind of where I think, you know, if you're going to shrink it down and, and that, that's, that's the, the, the real starting point for me. Yeah, so uh, basically on that particular time, when during the lawsuit for wrongful convictions and all that stuff that was going through, that was going to be a big payday. And I think, and I'm not saying that's necessarily a motive in of itself because, I mean, the state's the state. You know, it's not like, it, I, but, but they were, some of these cops were personally involved. That's, that's I the think difference. that's the thing. Right. Is, is they knew the sheriff, the trial. The sheriff, right? I believe. Yeah, and the then sh the sheriff. A handful from, of deputies. Yes. Personally and liable. A trial would absolutely tarnish the reputation yes. of that whole sheriff's office. So what had happened was, <laughs> was <laughs> so Stephen Avery had a, you know, he's, he, like I said, they lived on a, a well, they still do. His family obviously still, still there. Avery Auto Salvage. So they fixed cars. They had a junkyard in the back and all this stuff. And, you know, they were the, the local, like you said, dark blue collar, <laughs> you know, auto people. Yeah. Um, not very bright. I mean, no. just, let's just be real about it. And this is what I mean when we get into some of this evidence. It's like it's, it can't, can't be this guy. Right. But, you know, so this girl, uh, she goes on the property to take pictures of a, uh, I'm not sure if it was a truck or whatever, had for sale. Yeah. Had for sale. It was like a used car. For, it was actually Car Trader, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Car Trader. So Teresa yeah. Hallback. Now, we have to acknowledge this is a real woman who is dead, and yes. she has a family. Uh, I don't, we, we'll talk about that in a little bit, I'm sure. Chris and I both have daughters. Yes. You know, this is, uh, I do not want to leave her out of this. And, you know, somebody, she lost her life. Her family lost a, a daughter and, and sister and all that good yeah. stuff. But this is what bugs me is they don't they don't want to participate in, in in any of these, you know, making a murder things or whatever. They can only get the footage from trial since it's, you know, public record and all that. You would think they want to know the truth. And if it's if it brings any doubt to what they heard from the prosecutor, Ken Kratz. Oof. Oh Lord. Um I just think I mean, I don't know. I would want to know. I know. I understand and it opens old wounds. I, I do. I get that. Even Kathleen Zellner says that when people like me come around, it opens these old wounds. They don't like me very much. But she said it herself. You would think they would want to know the absolute truth right. and not just settle for a conviction to make them. I don't know how that makes you feel better is what I'm saying. I know. It's not going to bring her back. And I get it that in their mind, the case is closed. I do. I do. But if, say you don't watch the documentary. Right. But everybody else, ninety percent of the rest of the United States population watches it. Yes. You're gonna hear stuff. Oh yeah. Surely somebody in that family has heard, hey, there's some stuff on there that kind of looks, you know, this, e this way. Exactly. It and it seems I, like at least in part two we would see. It. I, I would want. I, I just wonder that myself. Have they actually watched it? Because the, you know, I think they're. I think you read an article that they claimed where it was all slanted. And, you, yep. know, you got the you got the Avery family, family. side. Yeah. Versus their side, but they declined. I mean, they declined to yeah. be a part of it. They were asked to be part of it. So you can't say that it's slanted when you were you had a fair shot to be in there. And the only person that participated was like a, a college friend of hers. Yeah. Right. She, he, he was kind of speaking on their behalf almost in a way. But it's just really odd to me when there's any kind of doubt brought up. Like, again, we, we're. I don't know what information we're missing. We don't know what we don't know. No, no. But I'm just saying based off of, again, physics and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't matter who's not there or who's – it's not slanted. Physics ain't slanted. You no. know, Unless they cut out the part and where – Biology. Yeah, exactly. That, you know? Unless they cut out the part where Kathleen Zinner says, oh, well, I guess he could have done it that way. But they didn't – obviously that didn't happen. 
So that's right. Anyway, I mean, it's just a, it's just a crazy ironic story where a guy is saved by DNA evidence when it came out, and then of course you know condemned by it at the same time. Well, I actually um, I told you I had a couple questions to ask you. Uh, this is probably a cool. Sure, time sure. To, to ask <laughs> no, we're not going back. No, to we're gonna do that. <laughs> but, um, uh, wrong documentary. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I, was back, I was back in Joe Exotic mode. <laughs> we might have to bring him out before this is over. <laughs> with. Um, but no, my my question for you is this: Is it <clears throat> is it just me? Or do you think that there's just something natural in people who to to kind of root for the less fortunate people, the underdog, so to speak? And oh yeah, we're like uh, like your Forrest Gumps. Yes, you know your uh, what what's the of mice and men? The Lenny on there. He's yes. not too bright, you know, because uh, they play on the. They're not too bright a lot. They and, do, and not they do. not saying they shouldn't because that to me is a big part. It of It is a huge part of, especially with Brendan, for sure. And I think I worry that sometimes I get caught up in that, and that's why I'm asking you this is because by not participating, right? And and this is is with the most respect. This is from my heart. Like I said, with with all due respect to the Hallback family. By them not participating, do they not like automatically kind of come off snooty? Like, yes. Like yeah, they do. Yeah, like they, they do. Like they almost look down on the Averys with disdain. Absolutely. Like the and and I mean almost like not just because the Avery is accused of killing their daughter. It's like almost you feel like if they crossed in a store. Or somewhere they would look down on them. Yeah, and, and you know because the way the documentary is portrayed, or is it just a natural? Yeah, I think for sure that two parts. I for, for damn sure believe that there's a natural thing to pull for the quote unquote underdog. I completely believe that there's there's some primal story there, primal thing there that I think everybody feels when they see these kind of stories. So I have no doubt about that. So that's one thing, right? But the other thing is, is that's always the feeling I got when they shut. Now again, it's just court footage. I know, and very little. And then the uh, the brother was the spokesman as opposed to the, to the father or yep. mother, which was, it was I know it was odd to me. It was too. It was odd to me that he was the spokesman for the family, and they seemed to be when they showed them. I stuck exactly what I thought. I didn't realize that. I think you mentioned they were dairy farmers. Yeah, I didn't realize that either. I'd always pictured, you know, some high class whatever. Me too. And then versus the little, like you said, dark blue collar, you know, dumb hicks over here. So like the wonderful whites of West Virginia versus yeah. <laughs> versus the Lannisters. Dude, you know? I know, man. <laughs> that's, I, the that's the way a, it felt to yeah. me. Now again, that's the way it portrayed them, but they they didn't take the opportunity or somebody to go on the record and you know at, and be asked about all this stuff. It was it was almost it would almost take you back to school. Like I could look at her brother, mm -hmm. and then I could look at yes. Brendan Dassey, who we yes. really haven't introduced. And he's here. the guy picking on Brendan in the classroom. In yep, absolutely. That's, what That's the, I felt like man. it was it was Alpha. <laughs> it was, I'm trying to. Was, I was trying to go for a Revenge of the Nerds reference. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was you know it was Lambda 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 versus the Alpha whatever's. Yeah. I forget remember their names. I know, man. Um, never that's mind the Mega Moves, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, that's what it felt like to me. Yeah. That's why I was trying to. I was wondering if you were feeling that vibe. Oh uh, yeah, I did. I absolutely and, did. And it, that's what I mean. I just it, don't get it. I don't that, get why they wouldn't want to. If there's something so wrong with the documentary. Especially season two, which brings up the real questions. Because, I mean, the first one, you could sway either way almost. I mean, there's a lot of evidence that's that presented there. But when you bring Kathleen Zellner into it, and she's recreating things and buys the exact same car and all that stuff, you've got to question that. I don't care who you are. I know, because I like I, I, in my mind, I'm like, okay, the parents are so shell-shocked. Like, they... They almost probably have to force themselves to go to court because they know they're going to see pictures of her remains mm -hmm. and all this stuff, and it's going to be horrible. So they, I feel it's so bad for them. But then, right after that day's trial is over, they go out to the press 
and the son seems so arrogant. He does. He's just like, <laughs> I and, don't care what he says. Uh, 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 you know what I mean? Right, just seems right. like that. And it, fe- it feels like if it's, I was the dad, like, I would have like, called him down. It's like, cra- exactly. It's like Kratz was just telling them everything and they just ate it all up. And I get it. They're in an emotional state, they I guess. Really I get are. it at the time. Tough. But now, this was years later. Yeah, I know. The trial, the, yeah. This was years then, later. I mean, you, and then you know. the documentary is 10 years. It was later. just really odd for him to be the spokesman, whatever, besides dad or mom. I don't understand that, but whatever. I don't. I guess they had to choose somebody, right? And maybe he, but he felt he, it was like a almost a personal thing to him. It did. It, it's the way it felt. And, and uh, we are aware that yeah, your sister being murdered. Yes, is personal, obviously. I but mean, you know what he's saying. It, you right. know, it's it, it did. It felt like a personal thing of like I don't want justice. I want you. Yeah, and, right or this dude and this whole fucking almost family. like if if uh, if Stephen had a son that went to school with him and beat his ass one time. Yeah, you know like that it type was a of feeling. Personal vendetta, it, it, I don't like know. that. But yeah, and again, that's so, just conjecture, I guess. But I don't know. And you, so you brought up Ken Kratz. Okay. Oh God, man. So I actually, uh, let, let me let me uh, just bring yes. them up to speed again, because of what we said in the beginning about the first conviction and how the sheriff's department was so involved and it looked bad on them, like they tried to arrest Stephen Avery for the rape and then not look at anybody else. When this murder happened, supposedly Manitowoc County were going to step back because of a conflict of interest. Yes. Because they knew they had that trial and all this and it would look bad. So they were going to step away and let the neighboring county come in. To do the investigation. Yeah, and that's where Kratz comes in. He's from the neighboring county. All right, he's their uh, what DA? DA, yeah, their assistant DA, whatever. And yeah. so he starts taking over the press conferences. Then he runs the trials as well. So you get a lot of Ken Kratz in both of these documentaries. Oh, I can tell you right now, series. he used this to sell books. Yeah, absolutely. Because he, well, go ahead. Well, I'm sorry, well, I, mean, I was off, just but. gonna say the worst thing Kratz did. He's he's a miserable human being i i can just tell i think i'm pretty good at reading people yeah, i, I really so. do i don't care how they filmed it he is the most arrogant and he gets off on this yeah, kind of shit I'm he does tell that right gets now. off on it so the worst thing he did in the whole trial or anything was these people brought in brendan dassey which is steven's nephew who lived next door to steven Right. And they question him for hours without a lawyer or his parents. He's 15 years old. Yep. And they get a confession. That's clearly. It clearly, yeah. Fed, just, fed to him. It's I fantasy. Mean, it's cr- so clear. And so Kratz goes on television. The next day. Yes. Which is unprecedented. This is not, this is the court of public opinion. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. Before any jury pool is picked or anything. I mean, he goes out there and gives explicit details and says, this is who killed her. And this how, is how they did it. And this is how graphic it is. So if you've got kids in the room, you might want to, you know, get them out of the room or right. cover their ears. This is graphic. And he goes about laying all this out. And he taints the whole jury field, if you ask Absolutely. me. Absolutely. That's exactly what it did. And it's it's all, uh, and uh, to me, that's illegal. I'm not sure. Zellner brought that up in season two. He said, that was the worst thing I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And she has gotten 18 yeah. people, I believe, exonerated for, uh, for you know, wrongly convicted. Um, but yeah, that was the absolute worst thing you could do. I believe it's break some kind of statute or law or I something would say. because you're going out there, uh, and you're tainting the people in the, in with just opinion saying this is exactly what happened based off a confession that we, that they never saw. They never saw themselves at the time till the documentary came out. Right. Right. And they, when they go in there, it doesn't matter who they pick. They already won. That's right. Pretty much. Yeah. Because. because They've been the, told. The, the DA, the authorities, got on TV and said this is what happened and how it happened, and here's the graphic details so you, you could pull on those heartstrings. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he he lost from the get-go because of that. Yeah, that was it's ridiculous. They they literally said there were nobody else involved. This is who did it. This is how they did it and where it happened and everything. Like with absolute certainty. Yes. Literally, before they investigated everything and even found evidence to – 
to match it, which they tried to do so bad. And you know, I mean, like, he's sitting there in front of a pile of microphones. Every one of those microphones go to a television outlet yes. or a newspaper. or I mean, so And a satellite somewhere. Everybody <laughs> that, that has any type of media fed to them, they're going to hear this. Right. So how that was allowed to happen. So I say... He deserves another trial just for that. Absolutely. And but, she that's one of her things is, as Zellner in her um, appeals process is is that stuff against him and the lack of counsel. There's t- I got a list. There's 10 things that's the kind of the highlights of her files and stuff. Because now they're the current status apparently is just for an update for 2020 is that they're waiting on her appeal, his appeal to go through. Because the got to remember that these like um, they went up through the state level. And the judge, he was found guilty. Brandon found guilty. Yeah, both of them. Both were. of them. And pretty much, though, they, everybody seems to think they are found guilty off of Brandon's testimony. Yes, both. Or confession. If Brandon's falls apart, his case, yeah, then Stevens goes Stevens away. Stevens goes away, too. Automatically. Yes. So it's dependent on Brandon staying in prison, essentially, for the state. So they go up to, you know, so after their post-conviction stuff, they get new attorneys, and that's what we were talking about, maybe even inviting on the podcast one day. That'd be yeah, great. Yeah, that would be awesome. Her and the, uh, uh, was it Center for, um, I can't, wrongful, wrongful Convictions? Oh, the Innocence Project. And that, yeah, those, yeah. Those lawyers. So they represent Stephen, and then, of course, Zellner, uh, I'm sorry, Zellner was Stephen, and they represent Brendan. So they they he's his uh, process is exhausted. They went up through... Everything and it was ne- it was never overturned. Well, no, it was overturned by the federal circuit judge. Right, overturned his conviction. Then that gives them thirty days to either retry, let him go, or appeal. Yeah. The thirtieth day, when he was supposed to be released at five o'clock, they get a little appeal in like an hour before or something like yes, that. Yes, it was ridiculous. It goes to the next level of the federal court system. They uphold the lower federal guy's opinion. That's right. And Three granted him. So so he was granted habeas corpus, and then the other, the next level confirmed it. Right. So twice, other the federal court said, no, he's innocent, let him go, or overturn the conviction, either retry him or let him go, basically, right. or appeal. And then it goes to the... This full nine, right? Is that right? Yeah, I think it was nine. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because it was three, three of them to begin with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then it goes to the full panel. And of the three, though, you just needed a majority, and it was two to one, right? Yep. Yep. On the th- on, on the, the three, three, it was two to one, and yeah. then the the nine, it was uh, it was it was one away. Yeah, it was one away, and so and so they reversed the other twos, and then so it went back to a conviction. Is and, what we're saying. And so it blows me away because, like he said, the first judge alone who should had have an, the authority. And had a 91 page deposition that's, about that's it. That's exactly what I was getting ready okay, to say. Go ahead. That, no, no, no. That, but you, that we're definitely yeah. in sync because I was going to say he wrote something that just ripped them to fucking shreds. Ripped them to shreds. I mean, uh, that's that in itself is a huge statement that a federal judge granted him habeas corpus. Which is done about point zero zero one percent of the time of all cases, right? And wrote a ninety-one page opinion on why they're full of shit and why he's overturned as far as his conviction. Yeah, and then they go up the level. They do the appeal, like he said, and then those two people wrote similar things, saying this is just a travesty. I mean, this is a a young man who was grilled by these, you know, savvy officers. Yes. You can, you can clearly you see You know, it. they use the tactics like, man, we already know, we just need you to tell us. And yes. then when he didn't know what to say, they'd be like, okay, I'm just going to come out and ask you, what'd you do to her head? Yeah. Or something. And he'd be yeah. like, cut her. Yeah. You know, he didn't know. I know. He, he was clearly he guessing. No and the judge just said this was a grievous act. It's clear that he, it's clear that he doesn't know what to say. He's confused. Then, of course... Barb, his mom, comes in after, and you see probably probably a total of 30, 45 minutes of this thing throughout the thing when they replay it in different parts of it. She comes in, and he's like, what if his story is different than mine? You know, they got in my head. I know. Like, what if they? What if he says that we didn't do anything or I didn't do anything? So he thinks, and, he's basically told, look, you're going to be okay. You just got to tell us what we already know. And basically insinuated, you get to go home. 
That's right. Because he was thinking, uh, he was ready to go home and play video games. Watch that night. wrestling. Watch wrestling. Was yes. what it was. And because he he said that in there, like WrestleMania comes on or yep. something like that. Yeah. Well, you'll and get to see it if you just tell us what we want to hear. Yeah, they were saying things like that, right. like uh, you know, we're your we're on your side. You know, uh, you just we just got to get the story from you. You know, and that's the part that bothers me about we're here to help you. You know, the the that family and the Dassies in this case or the Averys, whatever is. She should have never let her son be in there no. without her sitting there. No. Because she and even comes in and says, did y'all pressure him? Because he's sitting there with like his hands in his face and freezes up when they walk back in. That's right. And he's, he's scared to death. And she's like, did y'all pressure him? You know, he's a slow learner. Did y'all, so, you know, she knew immediately something was wrong. Absolutely. He, he's a simple guy. And so he gets arrested. He thinks he's going home. He gets arrested. Yep. So... Like uh, opposite of Stephen, Stephen got a settlement. Um, this was not, you know, the the civil trial, the trial that uh, Chris was talking about, where he was going to get paid. Paid. He got like four hundred grand at one time, and so he was able to get high powered attorneys. Yeah, two good attorneys, and um, and that was uh, Jerome Budding or Jeremy. Yep, yeah, Budding, Budding or Strange. Budding. I'm not sure. Yeah, Budding. Dean Strang. Yeah, yeah. And so he had great attorneys. Well, Brennan had to get a court, court appointed. Oh, my. This guy. And so he oh gets, my God. what's his name? Uh, oh, Lynn Kaczynski. That's his yeah. first court appointed <laughs> lawyer. I'm sorry. And <laughs> you do hear that a lot. I'm it's sorry. So Dude, I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to jump to the screen and strangle this motherfucker. I swear Dude. I did. And, and their phone calls back and forth. You know they'll put the subtitles. No, I mean the lawyer, not no. not Brendan. No, I, when you said yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to strangle them sometimes because I did, I know. it's weird how they have their own language. Like the yes. mom and Brendan, Barb and Brendan could talk back and forth on the phone <coughs> by just using the word yeah and in different. It was almost tones. like uh, I am Groot. Yes, that's I am exactly Groot. what it's like. I am Groot. That's a great way to put it. I am Groot. You know, and so that's the way it was like just. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. We gotta we gotta make gotta have some kind of humor in here. Right. But no, I was saying the attorney, not Brendan. I mean, I was saying you this want to dude, strangle Lincoln Chinsky? Dude, he He still deserves it. Dude. Absolutely deserves it. This motherfucker he was working essentially with the prosecution. He was. And that's a violation of his uh constitutional rights right there in the in period. And that's one of her points in her uh, appeal, Kathleen Zellner, I'm saying, is that, I mean, it goes for both cases, actually, but for Stevens, it's still the same with Brendan. They didn't have proper counsel, and as good as they were, uh, the, the his attorneys in the, in the trial, um, they did not bring in experts. Right. They did not ask the right questions about... They didn't question anything. That was the problem. Right. They're, they're awesome. They really are. They are, uh, and they, they fully admit to that, that they I were limited, them. and they of course there was things they weren't told, too. That's right. There were Brady violations, which is, means that they turned over, the state and, turned over stuff to the family and never told the defense. Yeah, and Kathleen, you know, she has a whole super team with her, too. Yes. And probably unbelievable funds. Oh, because absolutely. Because after she gets these dudes out, they get paid. Absolutely. And so, but anyway, the Lynn Kaczynski, his first lawyer, he comes in and <laughs> his first action should be, I cannot believe y'all questioned my client like that. He's 15 years old. Absolutely. Uh, without me present. No. What does he do? He hires this guy named Michael O'Kelly to send Brendan to, to get Brendan in the right story, get a story right, so he can send him back to the fucking guys that interviewed him the first time. Right. Without him again, alone. The first step should be, actually, in my opinion, believe in your client. Either you take the case because you believe he's innocent. Right. And he never believed he was innocent. He thought, well, you got a confession on tape. Yeah. So we just got to make it easier. I guess that was his thought process. You're right. Was let's um, let's maybe get you less time. That's all it was. That's all it could be. Yeah, because I remember that one reporter asked him, have you ever done a murder trial or whatever? He's like, like never went to trial, actually. Right, exactly. I've represented a murderer before. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, man. Listen, people just need to watch this. Like, Yeah, there's so much stuff. If I mean, you haven't watched 
And if you haven't watched it at all, or if if you kind of watched it and maybe stopped watching and around a couple episodes or something, go back and watch. Yeah, it. I don't it's see how you it. could, but I mean, I don't, maybe. I don't either. Uh, it, it's so you know, insane. There's so many layers and so many people. You could we could go into all of the right the the evidence as far as what really is weird. But I mean, Zellner sums it up really well herself. I mean, it's season two really really sets it in stone for me that. Yeah. Something's fishy, if you, <laughs> regardless of who who it is. If you could look at a, a graph of <laughs> topics that Chris and I have talked about. Yes. I mean, you know, you're going to have your movies, you know, Star Wars is always going to have, you'd be a little there'd bit. Be, of, there'll be blips occasionally. Yeah. You know, and then you got Game of Thrones yes. a little bit up here. And Michael Jordan yeah. and basketball, <laughs> you know, and versus Wilt and all this stuff. <laughs> We've had a lot of conversations on that. Yeah. Pizza Hut. I mean, any <laughs> topics. But probably the highest spike that we've ever had was this because we have <laughs> literally everything, like he said, there's millions of things we could talk about. We've talked about them. Multiple we have, times. we have, I mean, there's so many people involved and you know, who it really points to the evidence and corrupt cops. I'm not saying all the cops, I'm saying certain guys like the one that called in the plates and already knew what the car was. I mean, this is just a bunch of crazy shit that just, it's insane. And again, we know we, I would love to, I would love for the family to come out and say what's missing in this documentary. Yeah, I would too. What's so slanted about it? I mean, you know what I mean? What is, what is missing? What's the big piece of evidence yeah. because, besides his past or well, he's a creepy guy or something? Between uh, season one and season two, <clears throat> when season two starts, you know, because after season one, there were people literally standing on the courthouse steps. Yes, uh, President from Obama around the country. President Obama at the time when this came out received a petition with was it a hundred and sixteen thousand? I want to say signatures. A lot, yeah. It was a lot to release him to basically pardon him and Brendan Dassey. Right. That's how big it got. It was it was huge. The fucking president of the United States got an email about and, it. And <laughs> had to say something. And about had it. to because once it gets to what, a hundred something thousand, the White House officially responds. I'll be damned. So yeah, it got that big. It's and just it's crazy. So yeah, so the the second season starts showing all that. The hype. Right. You know, showing all the headlines, making a murder, making a murder, Good Morning America saying making a murder. Yes. You know, nightline saying it. And so they they kind of show Kratz and them talking about what the thing left out. And it seemed like all they really focused on to answer that question yes. was the DNA on the hood latch. On the hood latch. That really seems to be all they really want to say was left out. And right. it was, and in fairness, it, it was left it, out in of the season first one. Mm-hmm. But it's so easily addressed in season two that it's That's not even right. it's don't even matter. That's right. Because it, it turns it's out handled. Turns out that, you know, you know, sweat is, you know, you can test do you get like if you touch a if you take a sweaty hand, uh, basically is what's going on here, and you touch a hood latch, first of all, you're gonna leave very, very little Right. Material, as they called it, to get DNA from. And this was robust. Because you're talking about skin cells and shit, basically. Yeah. And it was so much. It was <laughs> like, that, that it was like. He would have had to lick the hood latch cl- or something. Exactly. That's exactly what she said. He's going around, what, licking hood latches? Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So, I mean, it's it's, it's ridiculous. It's the, the, the blood sp- uh, spatter in the back didn't make any sense for what they said happened. All right, hold your. Uh oh, uh oh, we got. I have a question okay. for you. All right, all right. We don't, if I gave Chris the power, <laughs> oh shit, to at least retry them. Mm-hmm. Tell me what are your big three things that would make you say yes, retry them? Can you do? If that I was like a judge, yeah, and if I you had the hear... power to make the call whether they got a, re- a retrial or not, I'm assuming your answer is yes, at least retry them. I would Absolutely. say let them go, but. At least retry them. Yes. What 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 are your three biggest things you could point to? The the three biggest thing. Number one and, is and there's a million I know. Yes. I really know that. Number one, yeah, there's so many things, but just off the top of my head, the biggest that stand out, number one is the physical evidence of what actually happened in that RAV four. Like I just mentioned a few times. The blood on the key, uh where near the key uh where you start the car. Is is three three two or three inches back in that model, right? With a bleeding finger, it cannot touch that that space in the car. All right, the way it got that. there. Okay, so 
He's saying, if you haven't watched this, that they they uh, the prosecution said that Stephen Avery had a cut on his finger. Yes, and that, they had a picture of it. You yeah, know, where they had taken a picture of his hand, and he got in her car. And which he said he's never been in her car, right? Right. They're saying his blood's in the car, and they're saying he put her key in there, turned it to start it, right? And there's a big blood swipe right there. Yes, yeah, sideways. sideways. Now horizontal, not right. vertical. Right. Horizontal. So you had blood there. You had one drop in the back seat on or inside, not the back seat, but the back door and mm-hmm. the like door jam. And then uh, apparently again the as he called it, the sweat. You can't carry around sweat. Right. The evidence on the hood latch, which was so much, it was, cat hole, get down. It so, was so much, it's ridiculous. And then her blood was in the back, but not mixed with his. But here's the kicker. There was no blood on the door handle to get in the car. Nope. There was no blood on the, uh, steer, the steering wheel or right. the stick. Or anywhere on the floor. The hood latch, you could say, oh, he used his other hand, but you got to at least raise the hood and with there was the none one hand. There was none on the, the stand? None. So we know opening the hood takes two hands. Yes. So he's not opening it perfectly with the hand that's not cut. And then at the same time, like throwing it up and catching the latch right. with so the bloody So he would have had to use the bloody hand yes. to open and put the latch up. And here's the other thing, just to be clear on the whole car thing, not a single fingerprint. Nope. Not a single fingerprint no. of his on the entire car, with an open bleeding hand, not wearing gloves. Not wear- dude. You just that's don't work. Me just talking this logic, it, it kills me. It, it, cat hole, get down. So here's the thing. Get- there was there, there's a jury, yeah, who, who who's sitting there going, okay, that makes sense. His fingers bleeding. I see the picture of the scar where they yep. took the picture. Uh, he put a key in there turned the key and got blood on there. That makes sense. There was no key on the, there was no blood on the key chain. Nothing. Right. If you got a continuously bleeding cut there, you know, which is what I, they described it, an actively bleeding wound, an actively bleeding wound. And, yes. and I just don't like, I get that you go, Oh yeah, I could see that. But see, but when you look at the physics, she of it, actually got, a RAV4, just like exactly, the one that, exactly. and, and tried it a bunch with a bunch of blood. And it never, it got never made close. anything. And not even, it never touched it. There was not a single drop on it, much less a a horizontal swipe of it. And it, it, I mean, it's just common sense. To me. That's what I mean. I know it, you're regardless, not with your list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and, and that same hand would have been on the gear shift. It has to be. And and it, there was no blood because there he. Either. I mean, he supposedly went and hid this car on his own property and covered yeah. it with a tree. And he wiped every fingerprint off of it. Exactly, but never but, got the blood stains that were. Just, or her blood out of the back of the car where yeah. she was thrown into the back for some reason. Uh, anyway. Go ahead. Number two. Number two is the idea that Brendan was actually seen at home at the time by his own mother. And somehow that doesn't count as testimony. Dude, I know. He, I mean, because what had, I guess what they're saying was he went over there to take him his mail when he got home from school. He goes home. He plays video games like he normally does in his room. But then apparently at some time, uh, 6.30, 7 o'clock, he left again. But Barb testified that he was home and did not go back that night. You actually hear them arguing on right. a recorded phone call. She's like, but I, you were here. I y- saw you. You were here in your room. I saw you. Uh, so I am Groot. I mean, yeah. come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Number three, mm-hmm. the new technology that I just mentioned to you uh, earlier was Kathleen Zellner to, to, to be fair to her, because she makes sure, she tells you, she takes your case, that if you if you better be fucking innocent, because if you're guilty, she'll find out and make sure you go for longer. Right. And this happened with her. She represents somebody she thought was innocent. Turns out he ended up being uh, a the serial actual killer. A serial killer, and she had to wait till he died and got to present that evidence to all these families, like 20-something women. Yeah, it was crazy. And she waited and did that and never had to do that. She didn't have to... She she does not represent people that are guilty. Right. And she tells them straight up, if you if I find out, it's going to be worse for you. You're yeah. the stupidest person ever if you hire me. That's right. And, and so... he ain't scared. No, and he's excited. Mm-hmm. So he, she, there's this new technology that's not admissible in court yet, but I think it will be. I do too. Is some kind of brain scan technology where they reveal things that only the killer would know. So 
obviously the media had already, you know, Kratz had messed up a lot of shit with the, the media stunt. So that's he knew some things right. that had happened. That's right. And he went through the, the trial himself here in evidence. So they found some things that they could test that he would not know that was not presented about details only he would know if he was the killer. And what it does is basically it's a brain scan. I won't go in to try to explain the technology, but it picks up on these little centers that light up when, he, when you know something or when you don't. Yes. So they test it with a baseline of things they know you know and other things that they, maybe you know, and then they go into things you don't know, and they, it's random. It's completely random. So words, things flash up on this screen, and the guys, it's, almost, it's, it's a better polygraph is what it is. That's what it is. It's literally a brain polygraph, a brain scanner. And uh, they gave him the test, and he was excited to take it. Yeah. He took the test, and even the guy sitting in the jail cell <laughs> said, when I walked in here, I didn't know if you were guilty. But now I know 100% you're innocent, the guy who developed the technology. That's number three. That's a big one. Those three things, he's off. Because, like, he's just going home. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, they said it happened this way, and it did not. That's that's right. It did not. Um, I got to say, my my things are... I mean, there's more things, no, like I the know, dogs and I know. the dog pits those, and other are, burn barrels. That, and, that's... that's that's big shit. That, that's really big what you said. Uh, but, but one thing that I know that you hate, I mean, like, <laughs> that we've talked about, like, this really makes you want to beat your head against the wall. Yes. <laughs> Lots of things. Supposedly, <laughs> this girl, this this poor lady, and again, yeah, yeah, we yes. really care about this girl's life, and I want justice for her. I, I really, really do. do, man. I, I think that's what Damn this it, is about. She's just a young girl trying to make a living <clears throat> taking pictures. She loved taking pictures. It she, was her gateway into a bigger photography yeah. career and stuff. Yes, absolutely. And, I mean, it's, it's... But supposedly, man... Dirty ass, raggedy ass. I mean, just look around their property. Look in his house. Right. It was filthy. Supposedly, she is chained and tied to the oh, bed it is. It's... and stabbed and cut and her raped. neck. That's what Brendan and, had you yeah. know, said apparently. And cut her hair off, sawed it off with a knife, and all this stuff. This horrible and, shit. And yet, Stephen Avery. Was they went in there and took the paneling off the walls? They searched that house and never found one of her hairs in there. Not one speck of blood. None of her DNA was in that house. None, man. No blood. But then you so can't clean that good. He yeah, and you can look at the man's hands. If he cleaned that good, his fingernails would be clean from all the bleach and scrubbing and shit. Exactly. He's filthy, man. He has not been cleaning. No. And. So that's the big. That's one of the big things for me. Not one shred of her yeah, has ever been in that and bedroom. And then the idea was they did all that horrible shit, and then took her out to the garage, shot her twice in the head. And that's another thing that I want to say too about just the public and misper misperceptions about people in various areas. They found gun shells around this property. Yeah. Okay. If you live. Anywhere in the South or Midwest and have a farm or any kind of big yeah, piece of any land. Country, rural area. It don't matter. Yeah. I can tell you right now, you can go over to two, you can walk 200 feet that way and find bullet casings because it's the country. That's People right. People shoot their guns at their own targets. They have berms on their property, depending on what county you live in, where you can fire your weapons at you know your own targets and blow That's shit right. up. That is, and but when the jury hears that of city folk, Yep. And they say, well, oh, they, they found, found bullet. they found bullet fragments. Yeah. They found bullet fragments and they found casings in his garage. Yep. Well, God. I the mean, shooting had to happen there. I don't have bullet casings laying around my garage. Exactly. These people go off their back porch and shoot deer if they want to. Yep. And shoot at cars and targets. This is what rednecks do. It don't matter what if they're from the Midwest or here or south. It does that's what people do. So people that don't live that type of lifestyle would not understand. It's foreign to them. Right. So it automatically is another layer of like guilt in their head. Yep. It's just a common thing. It is, man. I mean, uh, anyway, and sorry. A little side rant no, there. I am Groot. I am Groot. True. I am Groot. Um, <laughs> so, the know. fact that the, the, the bedroom, it really bothers me because on the seventh time searching this tiny ass single wide trailer, and focusing on all the searching in the bedroom, on the seventh entry, they find a key to her RAV4. Yeah, right. And who finds it? 
two people from the town that's supposed to be backing off due to a conflict. Yeah, it's supposed to be out of the whole thing, this other county. And two people, not only from that county that's not supposed to be there, but they were involved in his first trial yes. in that deal. So that is a big thing. <clears throat> that to me. Um, um, you have cadaver dogs they never mentioned till season two that hit on the property below Stevens' property which was called mm-hmm. the quarry. It was a rock quarry or something. Yeah. That's where the dogs all hit and all that and stuff. The bloodhounds and the cadaver dogs. Yep. They and hit down there and then came back to the burn pit later. Yeah. I mean, the dogs really helped lay out things for the, them. And for Kathleen Zeller spe- specifically. The, yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. yep. And, and so another thing, just basically the same as what you're saying about the city folk, country folk thing. Yeah. Is, is you hear... Um, Oh, her car was found on his property? Right. You know, her this property, it's hard to imagine. I mean, it's huge. What, 40 acres of just cars? It's a yeah, huge, I don't, huge I don't, Was it 40? It's pretty big. It's a lot. It's I a know, lot. I, you know, yeah, it's I, a lot. I, I, I know, I, you know. But for reference, it was like a basically a big rectangle, and then the land behind it, the quarry is a lot bigger. Yeah, but... I mean, just literally there, but their property where yeah. the where the cars were, and this was 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 inside there parked like it was a junk car, and tried to be covered up and everything at the very back. But there's yep. multiple entrances that are far away from Stevens' house, and anybody, right. you know, it would be super easy to sneak a car in there and nobody know it, and. I think everybody and at the time, in town, if you watch this and hadn't seen it at the time, there was a road right there. So just like you said with the jury, I feel like the jury is thinking, well, if there was a, a new car on my property, I would know it, even right. if I lived in a junkyard. But it's the size of it and the fact that he grew up every day of his life seeing thousands of junk cars. There's no right. way anybody would notice that. That's right. There's no the way. The whole family lives and works there. I mean, there's no way. And, and it's in the very back, too. It's not like, you know, something where you would notice, like, right here on the front line, oh, there's an extra car there. It's not no. in the pile. And, Come on. And honestly, there are a million things, but the one thing that when I watch it back that makes my blood boil is that one cop, and I, I can't, picture his name on uh, i see the list of names i put right right i want to say it's colburn andrew colburn that sounds right yes dude he calls into dispatch with her tag number right and gets caught in the trial saying i didn't say it was a 94 rav4 or whatever it was yeah yeah. or whatever because it was he said oh yeah you did he played it back for him and said you told her she didn't tell you right and and that just kills me, dude. He clearly was looking at her license plate and called it in. Exactly, because he so, said uh, 94 Rav Four. Yep, and the one, and so he knew it. He was standing in front of it. He was looking at this fucking car, right? He and he knew he had found the missing girl's car. Exactly. And then there's multiple reports. We can't, like I said, with so much stuff. Yep. There's so much to get into. But there was reports that they she was seen leaving the property by somebody else in the family. And, Kathleen Zellner's put all this together and recreated things, and she thinks it has something to do with two other people in the family. It's just so much stuff, and I've always questioned Scott. Obviously, he's one of them, and the other, what's the kid? Uh, Bobby. Bobby. Yep, Brendan's brother and Brendan's stepdad. Yes, and... They it, testified, ag- I tried, testified against his own fucking brother. Yeah, and he's... he's that was what came up. What really started making that suspicious even before she came into the picture was he's saying this giant fire he saw that night, like 10 foot flames over, I don't know, it was over the garage. The, 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 in the remnants of the fire, there were two tire treads. Right. The steel belting of two tires. And the scientist said. Then he had, she has the expert scientist who works with decomposing bodies and burn bodies. And it's crazy that there's a field like that, but I guess there has to be who's an expert on how this happens, you cannot just burn somebody in an open pit fire. Right. He said, oh, yeah, tires are good fuel, but there were only two. There was only two. And and, and also... The point was, though, with the physics, there's nothing to enclose and, right. and bring, keep to, the heat in. To keep the heat in. Yes. And no residue. And how could there not be any pictures of her bones there? Nope. They Remember were just, that? Nope. That pissed me off. There's no pictures of her bones in the fire pit 
Although we know, we believe they were there. I mean, but it's just sloppy. Yeah. It's, so Zellner, from all that, without going into every little thing there, concluded that the main burn site was that other place in the quarry, and they had been moved there. Yeah. And the the scientists concur. And and one thing that Chris and I probably have talked about more than anything, and we talk about everything in this thing a yeah. lot. Yes. Is Stephen's parents. Oh, it's so horrible. It's so heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Because I, I really, you know, uh, it's, it's Barb, right, Barbara? Yep. And, no, Dolores. No, sorry, Dolores is the mom, Barb's and sister. Alan. And, and then Alan, fa the father. And dude, first of all, it's ruined their business. Yes. Nobody in that town will go to them anymore. Very few people. They've had to now sell every single car that they have for scrap. They had a bunch of like you know, parts for like 57 Chevys and stuff. Yeah. They made a lot of money off of because you couldn't get them anywhere. Now that place is barren. I mean, at least the last time we saw it on the opposite yeah, documentary. It shows like time lapse almost like yeah. it's just disappearing. It's just dis they're having to sell off all this scrap just to survive because nobody gets their car fixed anymore. They no. can't tow any cars and all that stuff. And then just the main thing is, is, dude, I feel like if it wasn't for this hope, little bit of hope they have with Kathleen Zellner that they'd be get they'd be gone. I think you're right. And I'm I'm so afraid that he's not gonna I don't know if he's gonna make it out before. They deserve better than this. They do. Even if he's tried and reconvicted, yes. They deserve absolutely. that hope. Exactly. And, and it's so to sad see to see trial. to see them having to go up there and travel so far to see him once a week or whatever and they can't get theirs as often. They're older. And I think they're literally waiting for him to be freed so they can kind of let go. I think you're right. I just think that's the way, that's, it, that's the way I take it. That's just heartbreaking, man. And see, that's mm -hmm. what sucks is, yes, it's about Steven's family because they're allowing the cameras to film them. I, my heart goes out to right. um, Kath, uh, not Kathleen, uh, Teresa Hallback's family, too. It does. But just it... I, I'm not seeing them cry. I'm not seeing them. They, they should be telling their side and everything. And I don't know, man. Right. It's pitiful. But his parents are, they're going to die soon. And give him a little bit of time with them, man. I, I just don't get it. Yeah, it, it, it's it great. It's, because the stuff on the documentary, literally, like I said, especially season two with Zellner and the recreations and all that physics stuff I was talking about, it's literally would overturn it. That itself, but it's just not what they he's got to have a trial before it can be admissible, yeah. Because that's what we're waiting on is all this new stuff she's put in she, new evidence petitions. We're waiting on an appeal process, which now has been extended. There's all this stuff, um, uh, Brady violations. She's got all this stuff that she's built, this humongous case, and they're waiting for an evidentiary hearing to introduce all this new stuff, which essentially is a new trial for her. And if that gets her, like if they grant that, it's over. It is. Absolutely. It's over. Mark our words. Yeah. It's over. If they get a heavy evidentiary hearing, he will be released, period. And, and Brendan, obviously. I want to ask you this too, man. It feels like the, the prosecution and the DA's office and everything, they... I respect the police, man, but they almost oh, yeah, yeah. are saying they're beyond reproach. Right. Like, how dare you question mm -hmm. the integrity or the motives of these cops. He's like, you do so at your own peril. Right. And I didn't like that, <laughs> I, I man. Know. What, what, what does that mean? It's like, Is God, that a fucking threat? I know, man. I mean, obviously. Because if anybody on that jury has any common sense. That's right. You can't hear that case out and go, these cops did some fishy stuff. Not, not say that they did fishy stuff. Right, There's exactly. No way. And that's the thing. We don't know. And, she, and Kathleen Zellner is using that in, this, in the case of Stephen anyway, is using um, the, 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 there's a, a law or something that she can claim. It's a constitutional right to good uh, defense. Oh, yeah. And they, they, are, they agree. They agree that she has to do all that stuff. They're, they agree. And these guys now go around talking about, yeah. and as well as uh, Brendan's lawyer, um, her and her team, they yes. go around the world, the country talking about this case and others about how the justice system and, and DNA and how people and why people would give it. Because people don't believe, well, if you didn't do it, why would you admit to it? Mm -hmm. There's it's more to it than that. It's not that simple. It's not that simple when they're telling you, you know, the, the techniques they use right. to get stuff out of somebody for a confession or for just to basically land a pro to prosecute somebody and, and get a W yeah. in, the, in, the, in the win column. 
And th- that really pissed me off, too, when um, Brennan's lawyer, the young lady, Laura Nurder, yeah. Nurider, yes. Nurider, yes. She is up there fighting for her client's r- life. Yes. In front of this whole nine-person panel of these judges, it's got to be the most intimidating thing anybody could ever do. And they're grilling her, man. They're just so mean. And I know, like, I want to say, if this was your grandson and he had an IQ of 70, yes. you know, you would not want the cops talking to him without his parent or, you know, right. a, a lawyer there. And then it seems like the young guy for the attorney's all, the the state is up there going, I don't really have to argue. You can't overturn this because that's a slap in the face to, you know, the judges that yes. ruled and the jury. Exactly. And that's his only thing. It's like she's trying to argue facts, and they're just like, they act like they're handcuffed right. by this prior decision. And another thing I, I want to mention before we get out of here, too, is that the good thing about all this is, and that's why I think everybody should actually do jury duty if they can instead of avoiding it. To get a little bit of inside information, or at least the, the experience of, of what that's like. Um, so I do appreciate that I went through that, especially watching shit like this. All, all the certain on the same scale. And I but, told you I went, and there was no trials that, no yeah. jury trials the week I got right, called, right? Because he had been, and I was so excited. Yeah. Go ahead. And so the cool thing about it is, is the because you know you can it's easy to so sit there and go the system, the system, the system, but the system's made up of people that are all flawed and have their own agendas or whatever. The good thing about it is, is there is a system in place for this. And that's what we're seeing right now. That's we're seeing right. the appeal system. Now it takes a long time. It does. It's a shitty ineffective as far as the, the, you know, the, nothing's going to happen over, you know, in, in a week, it's going to be years, but there is a system in place for these appeals processes. And, and like I said, new evidentiary trials and hearings and all that stuff. So, that gives you a little bit of comfort because there are success stories there where are, people have gotten out. As a matter of fact, I, you and I haven't even had a chance to talk about this. On Netflix is a new docu-series called The Innocence Files. And, oh, dude, it's go. literally some people we re, you really recognize from here, from The Innocence Project. Right. And they each episode shows... A, a different person who get off, and I binged it all in one night last week. <laughs> it, there, there's I don't know five or six episodes, right. and I watched every one of them. And dude, you wouldn't believe how people are. S- and and, and Ooh, what's, yeah, and what's crazy? You know, and, and you know, I told you I finally watched the other one that we were talking about, um, uh, Long Shot. Yes, I mean he he. This was not that you know he wasn't found guilty because of happenstance i mean literally the larry david show was filming and found this guy and we won't get into all this but the point being that if it wasn't for that show being at this ballpark and was it um was it cubs oh i, I can't dodger remember. stadium, dodger stadium. Yep. yes dodgers they were filming an episode in dodger stadium which put this guy there and they could prove that he was there because he was captured on camera because they were filming this show there which saved his life. Now, if it wasn't for that, he'd be in prison for murder. No doubt. And no doubt. You even said, because I'd forgotten that even after it showed him on camera, they were still trying. Yeah, to they save. said it didn't mean anything because he had time to get somewhere, and luckily, cell phone tower saved him. God. And speaking of cell phone tower, because they could ping where he was. Right. So you had just brought up, and I'll put these links in the description because we, we can't go through everything, obviously. No. But you brought up, a, read an awesome article before we started about all these phone calls that seemed to point to the boyfriend who was yes. never considered a suspect, the boyfriend of this girl. And they found her uh, day planner back at his house when it was with her that day she went missing. Eh, I mean, come on. They literally... Zellner, as you'll see if you watch this or if you have watched it and forgot, Zellner looks at the phone records and can see where basically she was writing stuff in her day planner while (laughs) she was in her car the day she went missing, and yet he had it at back at her house. Right, but he was never a suspect. That's so weird, guys. Never. I mean, and that's and anybody knows that watches any true crime stuff. The first people you go to is lovers, exes, wives, husbands, whatever. I mean, Mm -hmm. period. And he was. I mean, I'm not saying they never questioned him about anything, but 
never to be considered a suspect right with that kind of information I don't know. It, it's just really weird. I've man. got one last question. There's for so you. many weird things. But anyway, what really quick though? Let me just say, yep. I have a list here of normal of, of kind of things where that the, the Zellner is we're waiting on right. for the legal process. I'll just read a couple. I'll put this link because um, there's plenty of articles out there. But number one is Zellner states the circuit court abused its discretion in dis- uh, dismissing Avery's request for additional scientific testing. So that was the idea that, that you know you had the the new evidence she found and all the new DNA stuff and the lack of evidence and all that kind of stuff as well as the bones right. that were never confirmed to be hers. I know, man. And they were just shipped off to the family and never tested oh. in a lab, and now they're gone forever. Gone forever. Unless they can be exhumed from somewhere or something to even confirm it's her. That's so crazy. Um. So yeah. I, anyway, you know what? I won't go through that. There's a whole list of the ten major points in her brief. Her brief is like giant, huge. Yes. So I'll link. I'll link that in the description on YouTube and uh, and let people see the the current standing of where where what we're doing is waiting on. Um, the state had a they had appealed it right Stevens trial, and then now the state grant had an uh, they were granted an extension of course to um, do whatever they're going to do. That was supposed to happen March the 27th, I believe. But now with COVID, that's extended to May. So sometime in May, I think it's early May, they have to answer the appeals process. So that's where we're at legally. Right. So something there's still there's still hope for for Stephen. And like I said, when Stevens goes, either one of them goes, the other one's free. That's essentially. right. Essentially. And it appears that that's what's holding it all up, is they want Stephen in there so bad. That Brendan has clearly been violated. Like, Yo, you know, it's so bad. And like, they have to keep him in there. This poor kid. Yep. He's now thirty years old. <sighs> and they when it started. It, I mean, they have to wait. They have to keep him in there just to keep Stephen in there. That's it. Because everything depends on his false testimony or his false confession. Yes. That later he said they got my head, and then the fucking lawyer made him go in there and draw things. Told him what to draw. Basically told him what to draw on this paper. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, th- I mean, they're working for the damn prosecution. These are defense people. It doesn't make sense. And so that's clearly a constitutional violation. So that's all in there as well. It, there's clearly something's not right about this. We don't know what's missing from the documentary. Right. or We couldn't watch the whole trial, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, you watch just a handful of those things, and their whole case is out the window. Yeah. Period. Here's my question for you. I am Stephen Avery gets out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he gets out tomorrow, right? You know yeah, damn well he does not want to go back to court. And, and right. And as much as he, he probably would like to. Oh, I love I think he I, would actually be excited to go back with her. So well, what I'm getting at is if he gets out, there are police officers and you know, prosecutors who should probably face yes. a trial themselves. Absolutely. So if Stephen just says, fuck it, I'm happy to be out. I don't want to go through all that. It take years and years off of my life. Right. Do you see the state doing anything about it? Because I don't. I don't think. I think if Stephen does not take them to trial for a civil suit, the state. Will oh, not do you're an saying on their own, like, inve- yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, people. man. I doubt it. I doubt that. I think if if it came up to where he got out and he walked or whatever, I think they'd be like, "Look, we got to just be done with this. We got to let these people, you know, the current people, let them retire and move on. We got to fix our name." I don't think they'd bring anything up to make anybody look bad or bring just keep either. the story going is what I'm saying. I don't either. But I although it's but it's I mean a shame. you never know. You could have some new people come in here and say, yeah, this is some bullshit up in here. I agree. That I think that you just nailed it and I didn't even think that. I think you're right. So that's certainly it's gonna possible. take a new generation. Uh, right. And some of these people who think they got because by with you know something. look most police officers and detectives and whatever they're they're stand up people. Most ever you know obviously I, so there's some people, and even uh, that's another thing that you know, Zellner as well as um, Brendan's lawyers has pointed out. There's lots of cops out there who's watching this, saying, "Keep going, keep going," and they, they they're getting support from police officers too. That's a big thing. So yeah, I think um, I think that that's possible, but I don't know. Uh, the current people, no, obviously, because no. I would watch. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I would watch those trials like I, crazy. I would too because I'd love to see them get put I through the ringer. I want to see them, be, yeah, put through the ringer. But that's what I mean it was about the trial. Like if if Stephen got a second trial or even this this hearing, she would eat them up. Well, and he would love would, it. That would be what I would like to see. Actually, she would eat them up. Yeah. They would be like, uh, 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 but uh, 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 I mean, they couldn't answer this shit. Physics, mm -hmm. it's physics. She's gonna get them. <laughs> so I hope they so. They don't want no part of it. I hope so. I just hope they do before his parents die. I do too. Amen. Uh, anyway, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, let me let us know what you think in the YouTube comments. Uh, if you watch this on or listen to this on SoundCloud, Google Play, Spotify, iTunes, or Podbean. Uh, feel free to leave us a little rating there. That helps us out a lot. It really would. And uh, subscribe on YouTube. So uh, we'll let you um, go watch it or watch it again. Talk about it. We'll be replying in the comments, and we'll let it. I am grrr. Yeah. 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 <laughs>